Hi, everyone, and welcome to How We Did It, which is where we get to share exciting stories about how we've worked with great companies to accomplish phenomenal things with their leaders. And today I have with me Dorothea, Dorothea mueller stashek who's going to talk about a client who has done an amazing job of creating these virtual learning journeys that have engaged their leaders worldwide in development and really helped to push them forward. Dorothea, welcome to How We Did It. Well, thanks for having me, Beth. It's a pleasure to be here. So tell me a little bit about this client and the business challenge that they were facing. Yeah, it's a it's a very nice story and uh, it comes out of Europe, which excites me personally, being based in Germany. So uh, this is a Danish client and we've been working with them for 18 months roundabout. So as long as the pandemic has hit us, we 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 on that uh, on on that client. Um, they um, claim to be a global leading technology partner. The main industry is cooling and heating, um, and it was a very interesting interesting story right from the beginning and it still is because it was the pandemic was here and they were facing a situation whereby they wanted to leave their previous um, leadership development vendor and chose a new one a fresh one a different one um, and as it happens we passed their way and we had an interesting sales cycle uh, with a very quick decision um, and uh, then you know as, as at the same time when COVID hit uh, they were asking us to pivot from face to face into virtual. So it all came together, which was exciting at the time. And now we're looking back on 18 months where we've implemented for learning journeys. So that is super exciting. Oh, that's fantastic. So tell me a little bit. It sounded like when they were starting, just starting to think about switching um, their approach to leadership development, that they were suddenly faced with that need for virtual at the same time. What were they doing previously for virtual leadership development and what did they want to do and change? They were doing nothing best. So the virtual leadership was not existing. And the initial plan was to slowly but surely educate the organization in a true blended learning approach, you know, with some virtual learning, some face to face learning. But then, as we know, the whole world changed and they were surprised, as we all were, with, with the situation. So it was a, a very interesting start because uh, it won was not, not us driving the offer, but the, um, the pandemic driving the need. When they wanted to go virtual, what kinds of things did we help them think about as they were un unveiling a true virtual learning experience? So not just, you know, a couple of webinars or things like that where we can read it, reach everybody at home, but really, truly virtual learning that they could still do together. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge when an organization like this one um, is going from face to face into virtual is the acceptance of this being a real true change process. So they were coming from an all inclusive um, vendor that supplied them with, you know, one or two day workshops and they did um, support them with invitations, venue booking, etc. PP, and that all needed to change accordingly. Right. So um, I think the first discussion we had was how well is the organization prepared to make that move? Right. So the learner as such, how educated are they to go in a Zoom session or any kind of, you know, virtual classroom session uh, and actively participate? There was that little question of how many percent of learners would switch on the camera? You know, and think back yourself uh, prior to COVID, how often did you switch on the camera? I did very seldomly, right? So that was kind of the initial conversation we had about the change process that needed to take place, right? Also, there was that whole discussion around what platform. Um, and then only on that one, we were asking them, how educated are your people to do self-directed learning? So really, at first, it was a analysis of um, how was training done in the past and how you envisioning it doing it in the future. 
Um, and only in that or after that discussion, we came to a point where we introduced a what we now call a different blended approach and blended meaning not being face to face and virtual, but self-directed and virtual instructor led. So that was only step three and four, so to speak. And then we came up with um, ideas of how we can use a learning platform, our learning platform from DDI, to support the learners, not only to have instructor-led sessions, but also doing things like webinars or having like little support nuggets you know, tools that you would be using in a training session. For example, when you think about uh, uh, training on feedback, right? We would introduce a form um, where you can just follow the methodology of giving um, positive feedback and feedback for improvement, right? And this form would be available on uh, the learning platform for access after the training. So that creates sustained learning and translated learning. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, all here on offer from DDI. The client really needed to um, understand and walk their way through the change process as such. Mm -hmm. So we have these virtual instructor-led classroom sessions that people are going through as part of a, a more structured learning journey, a little bit a little bit more traditional, but yet in the in the virtual world, still engaging people face to face on camera, everything like that. But then you mentioned that about half of this was also self-led. So what did the self-led part of this look like? Yeah, um, you know, they had that big vision in their mind of boosting self-led learning. And I see many organizations having that vision and also that strategy and purchase, purchasing like huge learning platforms. They are very much frustrated immediately because learners don't automatically enroll themselves and do it. So I think the benefit of the DDI learning platform is that there is a direct linkage as described with the um, feedback training to the training course. So we helped them really, the learners, to A, create an interest in the content, B, make it work in the classroom for them, and then the C part is where self-led learning comes in. If it was of critical interest and success impactful for them, they were able to have a micro course to visit after the training. So it really builds up that nice tension that, oh yeah, I can go there and I can do a 15 to 20 minute little booster to deep dive into the material. And then coming back in another virtual classroom and the instructor checking back in, hey, have you done that micro learning, created also a positive learning tension. All little things which help the learner to adapt to this new way of learning because they're coming from that old um, idea of I travel to a training, I sit there for a whole day and this is what I get and then I travel back with my suitcase full of stuff and I need to apply it. So now it's much more hands-on and you can really apply it as you go. So give me a sense of, you know, they're, they're rolling out these fantastic blended learning journeys. Who are they rolling them out to? What was the scale of this project and, and what level of leaders were they really targeting? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you know, they're really targeting the whole organization uh, as such. You know, they have 30,000 plus employees and for DDI it's a it's a big licensed client and there's a very special arrangements. If you ask me what exactly the target group is, it really starts from individual contrib contributors. And, um, you know, we we define for, for the client leadership uh, as not having direct reports is a must have, but really open up to that wider scope of leadership. So the individual contributor learning journey is called leading myself, which I think is a very nice title to understand why it is important to have some self-awareness, how to organize myself, how to react into a conflict, how to plan out my conversations or how to give feedback, right, to colleagues um, or even to my boss. So that's the first level. Second level is frontline level, and they call that um, growing my team, 
right? So it's frontline leaders or supervisory level um, who who in the leader in the in the uh, leadership role for the first time with direct reports. Um, the third one is leading my managers. So here we're talking about leaders of leaders. So really mid-level uh, who are starting to have a more strategic view into the organization. And the fourth one is called leading uh, the business. Right. And that talks about the divisional heads and really senior um, uh, level leadership in, in the executive space. So we're really covering the whole py uh, pyramid, if you want to say it like that. That's wonderful to hear because it sounds like it's not, yes, they have it broken down by level, but this is really affecting anyone who practices leadership in any way, whether it's with their direct reports or with others. So a part of that with um, the practice of leadership is it sounds to me like they're really building their culture of leadership and putting some of their values into the everyday behaviors um, that people are displaying, whether they are in formal leadership roles or, or more informally influencing others. How have things like inclusive leadership or other parts or really like the foundations of leadership, how are those shaping their culture? Yeah, um, and it's it's very precise how you you put it. They really reshaping their culture, and I think what we see a lot in Europe, especially in the Nordic countries, it's a typical organization that has been doing it for years, if not decades. So it wasn't kind of a green field, but with the old vendor, they already, you know, touched on topics such as feedback or conflict resolution. So the organization is a well-educated one. Um, what we discussed with them a lot, and, and that is a super successful point that you're mentioning, it are the newer topics. For example, these days, we're talking about hybrid working, um, but you were asking me about diversity and inclusion. Um, and uh, that was a critical success, critical point for them, right? Um, they, you know, their strategy is to follow the mega trends. And obviously um, diversity and inclusion is, is one of those mega trends that we see across the globe at the moment. And with that platform that I was mentioning earlier, the learning platform, we got a self-directed diversity and inclusion toolkit together and just brought it out to the client. So all of the 30,000 employees were able to access it. Um, and uh, we, we were very successful to just setting an impulse in the organization to start the conversation going. And I think this is what is critical, important and needed in organizations in today's world to just um, create that culture or that mindset that drives things forward. And now we're talking to them on how to support that further by really creating behavior change through um, instructor-led sessions on, on diversity and inclusion. So they've got these four blended learning journeys that are stretching across um, all these different levels. They are targeting some of these specific behaviors like inclusion to drive their culture. What's been the feedback? What's been the reaction from you know higher level stakeholders in the organization as well as the learners who are the ones who are doing this every day? Yeah. Boy, you know, the, this was just a very exciting year. And when I think about all the the ups also the downs, let's let's face it, when you go into rollout and when you pilot these kind of really compact, you know, the, those learning journeys are seven to 12 weeks long. So we're still in some, we're still in the middle of piloting it. Um, what we um, got from learners as feedback is, wow, this is totally different. You know, we, we were really wanting to go back into the good old times where we meet face to face, but this had an impact on me. This was a really great experience. Um, I think what thr thrills um, learners the most is to experience that an interactive session with an instructor can be fun energizing and engaging and this is what they like you know we put them in breakout rooms and they come back and they discuss and it's a really lively situation so um, that's what they really like and they couldn't envision that in the first space so that's really good to hear i think the biggest learning that we're taking is that change process that i mentioned first to really understand what um, 
learners need to change in terms of self-directed learning, that is still happening. And we are doing it at a slower pace than we were hoping for, right? So we really need to give very specific examples of what they need to do. You know, that learning tension from, okay, you go and visit that form and then you come back next time and we talk about it. They were kind of not believing us and then the next time they came back in not prepared. And you know, it's for, for very good reasons, you know, they have busy schedules. So don't get me wrong of me being na na na, you have to do that. But I think, you know, it just made very clear to me that um, it is an advantage to have smaller nuggets of training and structure led, but we need to allow organizations more time um, and learners more time to get into that new habit of self-directed learning. You know, it's no good to give them just a whole catalog of doing things. Do less, but do, do them very specific and target to what the learning is about, then it works. Oh, that's fantastic. And I, I love that we're starting to see that shift in mindset of, you know, I have some things I need to go to, and then I have some things I'm responsible for in between. And, and really, I this is part of my job. When we talk about making development a way of work, this is part of what I am responsible for, in addition to all the, all the things in my busy schedule. But I have this responsibility for learning and getting better. And I, I love your story about how you're starting to see this shift. So thank you for sharing that with me today, Dorotea. It was a delight to have you on How We Did It. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.